I have so many leads and so many follow-ups and so many on the verge. And now I got to create listings and I'm trying to train two employees. So it's, it's quality problems. I'm trying to keep my mind organized and, and uh, you know what I mean? Like to scale, I guess, what's the, do you guys have any advice or perspective on like the first things to get, to get rid of to have other people do? Uh, all the low dollar per hour tasks, all the stuff that does not necessarily have to be you doing it. Okay. No. So anything where you could say like, well, I could, you know, hire this out for 10 to 15 bucks an hour or less. That's yeah. probably something you should not be doing yourself okay. personally. All right. And I'm moving, moving towards that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, there's a, um, I think I mentioned that, uh, this book, uh, 80, 20 sales and marketing when we, you and I did our, uh, podcast, maybe I was talking to somebody else, but I think I read that. So I I there, yeah. there's a part in there that talks about, you know, for, for anybody, anybody, whether what job they're in or what they do or whatever, but if their effective hourly rate is $30 an hour or more, and you just got to look at, okay, how many, how much did I make last year in my business or my job or whatever, divided by how many hours I put in, just figure that up. If you're making 30 more, $30 an hour or more, you should have an assistant. And then just start shifting any tasks that are under 30 bucks an hour tasks over to, to the assistant. Yeah. And you're going to end up making more money. Okay, so how important is uh, uh, having an assistant that lives in your same area? I've got like I've got an assistant who lives in my area, and I've got an assistant who lives out of my area, and they're both great. So, okay. you know, if you want them to be able to deal locally with, uh, you know, I don't know, collecting rent on stuff, then they ought to be local. Okay. But it's not a requirement. But I'd recommend getting out of that as soon as possible too. The last thing, I mean, the, the worst thing you want to do is go look at houses, but the next worst thing is going picking up. <laughs> Get yeah. out of that wheel, Blair. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, I mean, what are you going to do with a lease option? That's what we got to do. Now, we don't yeah. go collect. Why are be very clear. EFT. Yes. EFT, your, your rent payments. Yes. No. no, no, no. See, I just had Brandy. She just goes to the mailbox and gets the checks. The oh, bit, our bit mailbox. Checks. Paper checks, that's old school, man. Wire transfer, EFT. Bro, dude, Just take it right from their account. Boom. We, we've, we've, got some, we've got some tenants who don't even have a bank account. They, they literally take an envelope full of cash and stick it in our mailbox. <laughs> you know, well, I'll tell you what, that brings up something interesting because we did this seven or eight years ago when we had a, a bunch of local rentals. We got one of those check cashing services to accept payments for us. Oh, nice. They only charge like 3% or something, and they would take care of however it came in. It didn't matter if it was yeah. a problem. They would switch huh. it over. <laughs> just like real money. Cash. Yeah, I love it. So you could do that too if you get going. Yeah.